Hi, we're here in Burlington, Vermont, the state that boasts the most breweries per capita in the entire country. We stopped by the Magic Hat Brewing Company and joined them for their local music festival, Heavy Fest. We also sample the best draft beer in the state at Switchback Brewing Company. And then we go on a hunt for the legendary Heady Topper Double IPA, beer advocate's number one beer in the world. Will we find it or will legend be left to hear saying stories? Find out this episode on the trail. We are here at Magic Hat Brewery, sitting here with Chris, the head brewer. Thanks a lot for uh, being on the show. My pleasure, Ben. Tell me a little bit about the history of Magic Hat. You've been around for a while, and now it's a monster in the craft beer scene. So the company was started back in 1994 by two gentlemen by the name of Alan Newman and Bob Johnson. And, uh, you know, Bob was a very avid home brewer and, uh, you know, brewed some batches in a, in a bathtub. Uh, the bathtub beer, yeah. The bathtub beer, yeah. You know, from there we've kind of grown. Uh, Alan was a, an avid uh, entrepreneur and uh, the two of them decided that they were going to start a brewery right here in Vermont. And, uh, you know, so they started uh, with a humble beginning over on Flint Avenue, and uh, we moved into the current facility we have today in 1997, and uh, underwent our last big expansion in 2008 and put in a 120 barrel brew system. So from bathtub to 120 barrel brew system in a little over 20 years. Uh, I believe we're currently in about 45 states, so okay. we're, we're currently marching yes. uh, to, to get into a, a national place, but yes. we have some work ahead of us for yep. sure. <laughs> Those five states are holding out. Hey, we're sitting here with Bobby Grimm. He's a brewer here at Switchback. Bobby, thanks for having us. Cheers. Here. Glad Cheers. to have you guys. Thank you. This is your Switchback Ale. Yes, sir. It's All our right. flagship beer. It's about 95% of our volume of beer that we do here, and it's the number one draft beer in Vermont. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I feel like for Vermont, that's definitely saying something. It absolutely is. Small population, small state. Big beer. Big beer. Started in this building in 2002. Um, Bill Cherry, the owner of the company, uh, he's the brewmaster here, and started it in the other room. And on a 15 barrel system, it kind of blossomed into this thing that everyone knows of Switchback as being now. And eventually, we got to a point where we needed a larger brew house. So Bill went over to Germany and purchased the beautiful brew house that we're actually sitting in right now, uh, Copper uh, Brew House. It's a small group of people. Uh, like I said, 10 people making the beer. People come in all the time on tours asking, like where the other Switchback breweries are and where else is Switchback made. And it's funny because um, we have a lot of tap handles throughout the state. So people think of us as being this huge company when really we're a very small company. So Magic Hat does a, a number of different events throughout the year. Our biggest being the Mardi Gras annual parade we throw uh, roughly around the first weekend of March. And uh, we donate all of the proceeds to a local charity called Hope Works. Uh, and so uh, that has grown to become one of the one of the top five largest Mardi Gras celebrations in the country. So Switchback sponsors a lot of um, local events, uh, whether it be music or food. Uh, in fact, we just sponsored Restaurant Week in Vermont, which is a pretty big deal. Some of the brewery events, like the one we have coming up this Saturday, uh, is Heavy Fest. Today you're at the Artifactory, Magic Pad's home. And today we're holding our Heavy Fest. Um, it's a really great cause. We get um, a bunch of local artists together. They come, they play in the parking lot. We have some cool street art. And a lot of the proceeds go to a big, heavy world. It's a local group that puts together money for artists around Vermont. And it gets them started going on the road, getting recording deals. And, uh, you know, we like to do a lot of those events here and, and kind of get people engaged. You know, we may be the big guy, but that doesn't mean we're the bad guy. With great beer comes great responsibility. It's true. So we got a lead about where the Heady Topper would be today. It's at two locations. We just tried the first location, but we thought, all right, we'll go there early, pick some up. Well, they don't distribute this beer until noon. We were told uh, we could get it by seven o'clock tonight at that location. And by that time or after, there's no guarantee it would probably be sold out. So there's this very small window opportunity that we can buy this beer today. The Vermont beer scene is, is certainly large and, and very prevalent. Every beer has its place and uh, you know that allows all of us to, to flourish here which is one of the best parts about it. We, we'll all help each other out when we can. Uh, we just actually had a, a big event last night uh, so a majority of all the brewers from the state were there and hanging out having some beers which was awesome and uh, you know we all get to sample the the wares of everybody's labor. We all want to produce the best beer out there and continue that 
Vermont quality brand, really. Um, so if one brewery opens and they're not doing so well, we want to help that brewery out to some degree because not only are they um, benefiting the craft beer scene of Vermont specifically, but also they're now involved in that brand of craft quality. And so it, it's certainly uh, camaraderie and, and very much a little bit of competition. You know, okay. we, we always, everybody still wants to sell their beer, but you want to support everybody else as well as much as you can. This gives a whole new meaning to beer games. I feel like drinking games. Indeed, it's yeah. a, a slightly different level of gaming. Yes, if you will. <laughs> beer is a huge part of the state of Vermont. So you think Vermont, you think beer. A lot of beer. beer. A lot of beer. Uh, maple syrup. <laughs> maple beer. syrup and beer. Right. Exactly. Yeah. People come to Vermont all the time to visit Switchback, to visit Magic Hat, um, all of the local breweries. Uh, they're coming to see what's going on there, to try the beer. When they come here, they're spending money on hotels, restaurants, everything that involves being a tourist. Yeah. And so that's huge for the state. Beer culture is very much, we know what we like, we, we will drink what we like, and uh, you know nobody's afraid to tell you one way or the other whether they like it or they don't, uh, which certainly is a, an advantage for, for us as brewers up here because we'll know what works and what doesn't, and you know we'll know what we need to tweak. It's a huge culture, and people really dig it here, and it's like, if you're not into it, then you're doing something wrong because it's just so much fun and it's a great culture to be a part of. We're, we're currently in the throes of summer production, so uh, a lot of kind of what we have is, is going to be slightly paler in color. Uh, so uh, I poured uh, four different ones for us today, uh, starting with number nine, um, which is our flagship. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. I love Vermont beer. When I can go to New York City, when I go home, um, and I see Magic Hat number nine in the corner store, it's the first thing I grabbed. For us, the uh, you know number nine started years ago and was uh, actually originally going to be a seasonal. And when we first launched it at a couple of beer festivals and markets, people just absolutely loved it. It's what we call a not quite pale ale. Sure. Uh, so we took a, a relatively classic English style pale ale with some two row malt and caramel. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very sweet. And and it's threw our own little good. twist on it. So yeah. uh, we we brew it with some apricot, okay. uh, which is kind of that sweety fruitness you get. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know one of the ways we like to incorporate it is is a little later in the conditioning process, so it actually comes out a little bit more in the nose than on the flavor. So it's not not cloyingly sweet, but it's a little sweet, so it's really accessible. Sure. Um, certainly an easy go-to on a hot day, a cold day. Oh yeah. Anywhere in between. The go-to beer is number nine. Exactly. When I when I'm at a bar. Even here, and I don't know what to get, it's always number 